Good morning, everyone. All right, if you're making your way to your seats, I do have some additional prayer announcements, uh, as well as some just some general announcements. It's good to see you here this morning in, 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 in lieu of the rain. It, we are getting a little bit of rain. Do they allow rain in Chester County? Okay, just have to check, because it'll, it'll rain here and you say, it ain't raining in my house. That it rain on my Chester. But uh, it's good to see you here this morning. We've got some visitors. I'd like to welcome you uh, as you're scattered here and there and abroad. Uh, you could have been anywhere else this morning, but you're here in worship with us, and we appreciate that. We would normally love, like to greet you and meet you and, and, and so on and so forth, but you know, we're kind of restricted right now. So if you see me wave at you from afar, it's not because I don't like you, it's just because I'm being obedient up to the guidelines, okay? Uh, Miss Betty, it's good to see you. I tell you, it, it just wasn't the same when you wasn't here. But um, I do have some additional things. Uh, the sign-up sheet to go to Samaritan's Purse is located at the welcome desk back there right at the two doors in the kitchen. If you want to go, uh, go ahead and sign up. We have 25 slots. And it will be the Wednesday night uh, before Thanksgiving, which will be the 25th, I believe it is. Uh, and our shift is from 6 to 10. Uh, there has been some guideline changes with Samaritan's Purse uh, in that they will not have food vendors there. So don't go thinking we'll take a break after a couple of hours and eat pizza or Chick-fil-A because they won't have it. I know they work with his heart right there. But um, uh, we'll, we'll figure out something, you know. And, uh, but they still have the, a few vending machines with drinks and things like that, but they just could not do food vending and uh, with some of the new guidelines and things. Also, if you need a shoe box, there are several over here uh, by the window and uh, the nursery here. If, you, if they are gone when you get ready to leave, just see me and I'll get you one. Trust me, I have plenty. Um, I'd love to see all of them that we have get gone this year which would give us a new record i'm not going to tell you how many shoe boxes i have but till you fill them all and uh but uh i do have more if you need them uh prisoner packet information if you need that just contact the church office we'll be able to uh, give you that information i don't have it right here before me but uh, we'll be collecting the stuff and the prisoner packets as well and getting them to the association um, by the end of November, I believe it is. Uh, now, additional prayer announcements this morning. Uh, I got a text this morning about 6.30. Uh, Betty Baysmore fell last night and has fractured her pelvis. Uh, they are in process of deciding whether or not to do surgery. Um, she's got some other medical conditions and she's taking some medication that will not allow her to have surgery immediately right now. So they're trying to get a plan together. Uh, so if you would be lifting up uh, Betty and, and her family. Uh, like I said, Ronnie texted me this morning and asked me if I'd add her to the prayer list. I said, absolutely, absolutely. Also uh, be lifting up the Wright family, of course, with the home going of Johnny's brother, Bill. Um, be lifting them up. I talked with Johnny uh, day before yesterday and you can tell that it's, it's a little, it's a little touchy with him. It, 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 it hurt his heart a little bit there. So just keep that family in prayer. Also, uh, homegoing with Debbie's brother, uh, Ed Coke. Uh, his service will be coming up, I think, tomorrow. So keep the, that family in your prayers as well. Uh, Carol Price had her eye surgery. They did not put it off. So she had her cataract surgery. She's at home resting well, doing good. So uh, just continue to lift her up. I think that's got her up to par now. And she's done with all of that. And then I was told this morning, Eddie's brother, Eddie Ferguson's brother, had to be taken by him to the hospital this morning. Uh, we want to lift them up and be praying for whatever that is, that God would intervene on that and put a healing hand upon him. And so, um, and bring, you know, just let us know what's going on. Uh, and Eddie, if you would, just keep me informed on that, okay? But uh, other than that, that's about all I have. We will have some... Uh, information and something to go at the end of the service, so uh, just kind of plan to stick around for a minute, okay? All right, let's get started with worship. Good morning. Good morning. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Yeah. Amen. Stand up with us this morning as we sing, and I want you to think it's, it's worth. 
worthy and as holy as God is, are you letting him build your life today? Is he molding you and making you into who you should be for him? So just worship him this morning as we sing.
together here in this building today, we want to praise you. We want to lift Jesus up that you might draw all of us unto you. That we might know that your presence, you're permeating this place. You're permeating our hearts. And our hearts are open to worship you this morning. Father, I pray as we gather together that we would give you the honor and praise that's rightfully yours. There is no one like you. You are so worthy of our praise. And I pray as we worship today that Jesus would be lifted. You promised us in your word that if Jesus is high and lifted up, you'll draw all men unto him. So Lord, as we lift Jesus this morning, I pray you draw us unto you. May you be glorified. And I pray as we look at the topic today that you help us to examine our, examine our hearts, our lives, our attitudes. Help us to see if we've bought in to some of the lies of the devil. False truths that keep us from growing. False truths that keep us from maturing in our faith. False truths that never let us enjoy the peace and the joy that you have for your children. So as we look at some of these lies this morning, help us to understand the truths and the word of God. That it doesn't matter what anybody else says, what anybody else thinks. I have the word of God for the truth. And I'll trust that over anyone or anything. I pray for those that Kenny has mentioned, those that are on the prayer list. Lord, you know those needs even better than we do. And it seems that in this time of chaos in our world, of disappointing news every day, of heartache that so many people are walking through, yet we also see there's sickness and death, heartaches that haven't taken a back seat to any of that. So I pray you encourage us today. Help us to understand the truth from your word. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. It's good to look out and greet you this morning. Welcome you to the Woodhaven Baptist Church. We are in our fifth month, June, July, August, September, and October. And this is the first Sunday we've had any rain on Sunday morning since before June. God has blessed us with pretty weather. And I'm glad that you're here this morning as we worship. Join together our hearts in praise to the Lord that, that we are here and in honor of what God is doing, not only here, but in our world. A lot of times we can't see what he's doing, but uh, he is doing some things. Amen. But it's good to see you, to welcome you to the Woodhaven Baptist Church. Uh, it's always a joy to have you. Don't know whether we'll ever be back to normal doing things the way we used to do them or not. I'm not too sure there's going to be much around any church that, that God's hands on that's going to be anything like it used to be. Now, there is a purging taking place. And uh, we just need to accept the new things that are coming in place of the old that maybe God had better things to do than that anyway. So we're just trying to find out what God is doing. Get in on that. Uh, pray that Kenny and I, the deacons, the leadership team, never want to plan something and then invite God to get in on it. Right. Uh, we want to find out what God's doing get on and get on board with that. Yeah, God right. bless you for being here. Uh, listen closely to what God wants to say to your heart this morning. Uh, we're going to look at some lies people believe mm -hmm. and truths to correct them. And I'll guarantee you there's somebody in here today that somewhere along church doctrine, biblical truth, uh, you bought into the lie of Satan about something in your life. And uh, listen to what God wants to say because it's easy to do that.
All right, let's continue worshiping this morning. Let's all stand and sing, I am thine, O Lord. In our walk. 
So let's see what God says about the lies that are for us this morning. John chapter 8, verses 30 through 32. Now, Jesus is beginning to predict his departure. You know, Jesus knew he was born to die. He knew that from the foundation of the world. And so in John's gospel, John says that he has been predicting his departure or telling them about his departure. And we pick up in verse 30, Jesus is saying, in light of that, let me give you some words about truth and freedom. In verse 30, Jesus says of chapter 8, as he was saying these things, many believed in him. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you continue in my word, you really are my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. All my ministry, I've heard various lies come out of the mouth of children of God. It seems that in the church, we're seeing a, a drifting further and further away from the truths of the Word of God and minds full of lies that Satan has implanted into the child of God. Now, Satan knows he can't get my salvation. He knows he can't disrupt your salvation. But he also knows if he can get us just to listen to him a little bit, that we'll begin to buy into some of the things he wants to plant within us that will hinder our Christian walk. And if you look at them, in fact, all the lies that people believe, if you look at them, the ones that Satan plants in our minds are the ones that line up most with self. You hear them and you say, well, that's selfish. And then you hear it from Satan and the falsehoods that Satan presents, and you say, well, that's selfish. And self and Satan line up very much alike when it comes to the word that we choose to believe is not truth in the word of God. Statistics are showing today there is a disturbing trend happening in the church. Every decade, the church is mattering less and less than the decade before. Every decade, the church has less influence than the decade before. Every decade, Christians have less influence than the decade before. And what we're seeing in this uh, pandemic that we're going through, I really believe, is God is purging out some of that stuff. And God wants our churches to come back bigger and stronger and more in love with Him than we ever have been. So that we, as a body of Christ at Woodhaven, don't start believing lies of Satan. In fact, I read something the other day that says that there are people in, evangel in evangelistic churches that they were up in here and doctored what the church believed that is slipping away. And there's even some in evangelistic churches that do not believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. And I guarantee if we would look at the doctrine or belief of, of each one of us here today, there would be some things that we would not agree on because we bought in to a selfish lie of Satan, whether it be me or you, and we failed to look to the Word of God for the truths that will correct them. We need to understand that when a church buys into these lines, when a Christian buys into them, that our true peace, our true purpose, and our true joy will all be all be conflicted within the 
church and conflicted within our lives. Because you cannot have the things that Christ has for us, the things God has for us, as a church or as an individual. Believing selfish things is contrary to the word of God. So I hope you'll learn something this morning. I hope you'll search your mind and see if you've been guilty of this at one time or another. I see unhappy Christians all the time. When troubles come, problems enter their life, they just don't understand the why of it. And because they believe one of these lies, they, they can't live a victorious life, and they go through their trials and difficulties believing that, and fail to understand that lies in our heart, our minds that we believe, come from Satan. And if you go to the Word of God and check that, hey, do you know what that tip is? If you're in a, some kind of debate nationally, they're going to they're gonna fact check that thing. See if what you're saying is truth. If you're, if you're saying something on a news broadcast, they're going to fact check that, see if it's true. We need to fact check everything that comes out of our mouths and every other thing we hear coming out of the mouths of other people. We need to check it by the Word of God. Amen. The Bible tells us in John 8, 44, that the devil is a liar. And not only is he a liar, he's the father of lies. So if we're entertaining lies in our spirit, not checking what we believe with the word of God, we're entertaining uh, the work of Satan, even in the life of the child of God. Because the Bible plainly tells us in John 8, 44, that he is a liar. He's the father of lies. And if I buy into that, then I am really conflicted because I'm believing something that the devil's the father of, and I'm trying to live a life that God's the father of. And it's almost, well, it is impossible to do that in joy and peace. Now, how does this happen? How does it happen that we miss the truths of the Word of God so often? How does it happen that we can believe some of the things that we believe? And if we go through the Baptist faith and message this morning and, and look at every one of those doctrines, I guarantee you there's some of you who wouldn't agree with that. And the reason you wouldn't agree to it is because you don't believe it. When we allow those lies to come into our lives, it's because we're entertaining something that we refuse to check the truth of in the Word of God. Now, what happens to happen? Well, first of all, it happens because we don't understand after the new birth, there's got to be growth. After the new birth, there's got to be growth. And it's tragic to see a Christian that's been a Christian for years and years and years, a professing Christian for years and years and years, and they're still a little babe in Christ, and they're still on the bottle, and their spiritual diapers have to be changed. Because they did not grow. People come and join the church sometime, we get them down front, and we say, all right, we're they're joining the church and just, just sit down over there just a minute. And they go over there and sit down on that pew and they stay on that pew for 50 years. Some of you are sitting on the pew this morning. Some of you are sitting on the pew. Are you growing? Are you maturing? We never will. We don't understand. Just like being a little baby in that nursery. Once we're born physically, we've got to grow. And once we're born spiritually in the new birth, we have got to grow. Another reason is our maturity, the thing that helps us to grow, is dependent on a daily infusion of the truth, the Word of God. Amen. Remember when we talked the other day in that sermon about Jesus, the, the Lord's Prayer, and He's praying for us? And he's saying, in essence, for the disciples and then for us, that we may know truth. Help us to know that your word is truth, Father. This book is the means through which we infuse our soul and our spirit and we grow in the Lord. 
And just as if we can we cannot grow physically if we don't ingest food, we cannot grow spiritually if we do not ingest the word of God. You know, Paul wrote, wrote to the Corinthian church, most troubled church in the entire word of God. Sometimes Kenny, we just always need to go back to the Corinthian church and see what was going on in that church. Then we can really praise God for this place. Amen. But you know what was happening? All that sin in the church at Corinth, Paul said, I'll tell you what's happening. I'll tell you why you are. Because you're still a babe in Christ. You can't, you can't digest the, the state of the Word of God. You're still on pablum and milk. And you're not in, in digesting the truth of the Word of God that helps your spirit grow and your soul be in tune with God. And there's a lot of Christians in churches today that sit on the pew, they'll sing the songs, they'll participate in worship. But they do not ingest this, they do not infuse this into their lives every day. Not only privately every day, but infusing it in worship, infusing it in Bible study, both coming to church, worship, and Bible study. That's important to our growth. You wouldn't say, well, I, I, I need to grow busy because I'm never going back to the grocery store. I want to grow, but I'm never going to turn this stove on and cook another meal. And if you don't go to the store and get the stuff, you don't cook it, you don't digest it, you're not going to grow physically. If you don't stay in this word privately, corporately, in church, in Bible study, in fellowship with the believers, then you're going to buy into some lies that is going to surprise you why you may come up with your doctrine. Sometimes we listen to others who have bought into the lies. And it sounds so good. You know, Satan can make things look so good that we think it's God doing it. But when he does that, we never see the after effect and when he's presented and when he's presented the bible says there's pleasure in sin if there wasn't pleasure in sin we wouldn't have the rampage of sin that we have but we forget the rest of that but it's only for a little while that's right and when it begins to pay off it stings like an atom it hurts when sin begins to pay off and, and some of us in this room this morning we are hurting today because of sin that was pleasurable at one time, but it began to pay off. So we buy into that that it sounds so good. And we, do, we also need to understand it happens because we do not understand where lies originate. And when we don't understand where lies originate, we get depressed, we get defeated, we get destroyed. Now, who does that sound like the work of? The evil one. The Bible says, be on the watch for him, for he's going around the roaring lion, seeking who he can devour. And if he can get you to, to just openly deny Christ, openly reject Christ, he'll get you believing stuff that will never get you to the place that God wants you to be as a child of God. So this morning, let's look at these. The first line. Life should be easy. You ever wonder that? Thought life was supposed to be easy. Well, let me tell you why it isn't. And it never will till Jesus comes. And we have to go back to the very first book in the Word of God. In Genesis chapter 3, at the fall of man, you get the consequences of that fall and it's serious it affects everybody that's been born since adam and eve the first child adam and eve had came out of the womb with that sin defect in chapter 16 of genesis 3 god said this is what's going to happen to you because you did what i told you not to do he said to the woman, I will intensify your labor pains, and you will bear children with painful effort. 
Any woman in here can't give testimony to that? Is that a child? Somebody said if a woman didn't have a good forgetter, they'd never have but one child. But somehow they didn't seem to forget the pain that went through in the first one. God said, your desire will be for your husband, but yet he will rule over you. And he said to the man, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, do not eat from it. The ground is cursed because of you. You will eat from it by means of painful labor all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. You will eat bread by the sweat of your brow until you return to the ground since you were taken from it, for you are dust and you will return to dust. And then Job looks about and and he's going through what he's going through that none of us have, have ever gone through. I don't know anybody who has gone through what Sorry. Job did. And this is what Job says about it all in Job 14.1. Anyone born of a woman is short of days and full of trouble. Paraphrase that, man's days are few and filled with trouble. Every few days that man has, they're filled with problems. And in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 13, Peter talked about Christian suffering. Dear friend, don't be surprised when the fiery ordeal comes among you to test you. As if something unusual were happening to you. Instead, rejoice as you share in the sufferings of Christ. So that you may rejoice also with great joy when his glory is revealed. Preacher, life is not bad. I thought when I come to Jesus and I gave my heart to Jesus, everything was going to be all right and, and I would not go through anything after that. When we come to Jesus, we're just starting the suffering. Not only do we have the suffering that's attuned to what man suffers, when we come to Christ, we have the suffering that we have to suffer for Christ. Amen. And Paul says, count it joy. Count it joy when we do that. You see, we're suffering in this world because of the physical. We're physical. We're spiritual. We're soulish. But in salvation, in that new birth, not a thing happens that, that affects the physical. If I'm cross-eyed when I'm saved, I'll be cross-eyed after I'm saved. If I don't have much hair when I'm saved, I'm not going to have much hair after I'm saved. The physical is not affected by that. The new birth is the Spirit coming alive. And when the Spirit comes alive, it begins to, uh, to, to fill our soul, our mind, our, our will, our intellect, our emotions. And the Spirit alters all of that when Christ is on the throne. But it doesn't help the physical very much. So don't buy into that lie that life should be easy. You did not get that out of the Word of God. You got it something from somebody, either you or Satan or somebody, that thought when you come to Christ, that's the end of your problem. When we come to Christ, that's just the beginning of some of them. That's right. And don't think you're it or I, we're going to get out of this world unscathed, that we're going to get out of this world uncut, unhurt, unburdened. When we come to Christ, some of those problems just begin. Life should be easy. The second lie is, life should be fair. Now you hear your kids say this all the time, but in our hearts, God hears it from us. 
Daddy, that ain't fair. You ever had your child think that? Yeah, you yeah. have. And if we're not careful, God has heard it from us, his child. For some reason, we think, once we've been saved, once we're growing, even though we may be called to preach, we may be called to be a missionary, we may be called to be a Sunday school teacher, a leader in the church, and that don't make anything fair. And if we're not careful, we'll look at the blessings of God upon some people. We look at we look at the blessings of God upon Christians and wonder why we can't be like them. We look at the blessings of God even on lost people. Because the Bible says some things about them. things that happen to happen to the just and the unjust, the righteous and the unrighteous. And we say, he don't love Jesus. They don't go to church. Man, they hook their boat up and go to the river every Sunday morning. Or they're out there going in their yard and changing the shrubbery. Uh, they don't know Jesus. And look how they're being blessed. You forget that's all they're ever going to have if they don't come to Jesus. That's all they're going to have. But who ever said life was going to be fair? In Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 and 45, Jesus says, You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. You've heard that. It's been said, Love your neighbor, hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So that you may be children of your Father in heaven, for he causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. God is not concerned with whether or not we think something fair is fair. God's going to do what he has ordained to be done in his mind, and God's going to do things. It doesn't matter what we think it is fair or not fair. God says it is. And we need to quit contradicting God, quit contradicting the Word of God, because nowhere will you read in the Bible that things are going to be fair on this earth in the minds of people. In Romans, or Matthew chapter 20, verse 8 through 16, Matthew 28 through 16, and I see this every day. I see this truth every day. Kathy, you see this truth every day. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard told his foreman, Richard, you see this truth every day. Call the workers and give them their pay, starting with the last and ending with the first. And when those were hired, about five came, and they each received one denarius. So when the five first ones came, they assumed that they would get more, but they received also a denarius each. And when they received it, they began to complain to the landowner. These last men put in one hour, and you made them equal to us, who bore the burden of the day's work and the burning heat. That ain't fair. The owner says, friend, I'm going to do you no wrong. Didn't you agree with me on a denarius? Take what is yours and go. I want to give this last man the same as I gave you. I, don't I have the right to do what I want to do with what is mine? And that's what God's saying to us. Don't I have the right to do what is mine? Are you jealous because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first last. I've always read that, and, and I thought, man, I see that so often. I've seen that in my own heart. Lord, I've done this. I've been doing it for years. 
And look what he's getting. Now, he's been doing it for six weeks. Look what he's got. He's about the best part I've got. Had one preacher tell, had one preacher tell me one day, he said, you drive me that Now, he was in a Lincoln. He said, you drive me that I said, yeah. That's your car? Yeah. It's God's and mine. And he looked at me, and he was serious as a heart attack. He said, brother, let me tell you something. My people wouldn't let me drive nothing like that. And he got his Lincoln, and he pulled out the driveway. I got in my forte, and I pulled out the driveway. And we both got to where we were going just fine. But I felt that way. Well, man, I've been, I've been in ministry 50-some years. This is a new kid on the block. Look what he's driving. Look what I'm driving. And then I had to repent. I had to repent and say, God, I'm sorry I even went to that direction. Life is not fair. It never will be on this side, and we need to understand that. The third one. I don't know where I'd come to Jesus or not. I don't know where I would come that mature Christ-like follower I need to be. Because, you know, the Bible says I have to be perfect to do those things. And you hear that lie, I have to be perfect. And then I begin to wonder in my mind, where, where, where are you getting that from? Well, there is a scripture that talks about that perfection. There's a scripture. Matthew 5, 48. Be perfect. Therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now, it ought to tell me and it ought to tell you, when we read that, it's not talking about sinless perfection and it's not talking about never sinning and it's not talking about having never having a bad thought, saying a bad thing, it can't be because, you see, we can never be like God. Now, we can be somewhat like Jesus. But in reality, we can never be in that obedience that Jesus has been in. We could be, but we just won't be. You know, there's never been a thing Jesus didn't obey the Father on then. Not one. And you read that and you say, well... Jesus said I had to be perfect. Well, let me clear your mind up about that now so you'll never think that again. What Matthew is talking about, what Jesus is talking about, that word perfect in 548 is not sinless perfection. Not, not doing wrong. Not living your life without an iota of disobedience in your life or mine. What that Greek word perfect actually means and, and connotes is completeness. Completeness. And so it reads that you understand that. Be complete in your walk. Just as your heavenly Father is complete in His being. If you never take that verse and do a little study of that verse and read some other translations, read some word studies of that verse, you'll never understand what is probably one of the best descriptions of what this word means in completeness that's found in the Amplified Bible. Matthew 5, 48 in the Amplified Bible, it says, You therefore will be perfect, growing into spiritual maturity, both in mind and character, having actively integrated godly values into your daily life as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now, do you see anything in there about you can't see it or you won't see it? If you believe that you have to be perfect to come to God, you'll never come. 
you'll doom yourself to die without Christ. Because we know we can. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the perfect person. Does it say that? No. God so loved the world that he gave us a gift. It don't say that God so loveth the rich, God so loveth the poor, God so loveth the educated, God so loveth the perfect, God so loveth the non-perfect, God so loveth the so love the good looking people. God so loved the healthy people. There's no conditions there. And perfect is not in there in the sense of never sinning. So when you read that, just to say Jesus is wanting me to know that I can live a mature life. I can complete what God is doing in my life just as he's completed what has been done in his life. Romans 3.23 all of sin to come short of the glory of God. When you read one verse in the scripture, don't take it out of context and think the whole scripture says the same thing. And when you see it out of context, if you believe that about perfection, sinless perfection, you read that, you take it out of context. Totally out of context. And then if, if that don't add to it, John says in 1 John 1, 8, this one's not on the screen. Talking to Christians, if we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Now, you tell me you can live in sinless perfection, then the Bible says you're deceived, and the truth is not in you. We don't have to be perfect. Christians aren't perfect. We're forgiven. We're forgiven. Then the last lie. Well, I would come. I, I would come to Jesus, but I don't believe I could live up to it because you see, preacher, I've got to earn God's love and grace. I've got to earn it. There are people sitting in churches this morning across America that really believe, yes, Jesus died on the cross for them, but they've got to earn that love and they've got to earn that grace. What did your child do to earn your love when you took him home from the maternity board? Probably hadn't done a thing to earn your love. If you've been in the hospital two nights, he kept you up or she kept you up two nights. You had to sleep two nights. They don't earn much in the first couple of years because they demand everything. But you love them with an unconditional love. Why do we think we've got to earn what God has for us? Bible says in Romans 5, 8, that God proved his own love for us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died, Christ died for us. And in Isaiah chapter 6, 64, verse 6, all of us have become like something unclean. And all our righteous acts or like a polluted garment, all of us wither like a leaf, and our iniquities carry us away like the wind. How are we going to earn something from God when God sees the very best in us is like polluted rags? He doesn't want anything to do with that. We don't work to gain heaven. We work because we have gained heaven. We don't work to be saved. We're saved so we can do the work. We don't have to be gifted to be called to do something. When we obey the call, he gifts us for that. Amen. Yeah. And we don't have to earn one thing because it's a free gift. When Jesus died on the cross, it was a free gift from God for me and for you. All the grace that he's got is a free gift. Simply by asking him for it and trusting it by faith. Lies, some believe, it, but there's truth to check it by. You hear something that don't sound right, check it. See what it came from. Father, thank you for the truths that you give us in the Word of God. Lord, how gracious we are. How thankful we are 
that we have the Word of God. And that everything we hear, everything we tend to believe, everything we say, everything we do, God, it can be fact-checked by the Word of God. Lord, help us to really understand what God's Word is. That everything you want from us, everything you require of us, every truth you give us is in this book. And there are other things you would want us to know that we've been in here too. Help us to obey. I pray this morning if there's somebody here who says, I can't give my life to Christ. I'm so unworthy. That's why you need. I can't give my life to Jesus because I don't I, I, I don't earn those things. I've got to earn that. I've got to, I've got to believe that I've got to do. Lord, that one lies keeping so many people out of heaven. So I pray if that's going on in hearts in here this morning that you would bring conviction and have them just to say, Lord, nothing in my hands I bring but simply to thy cross I cling. Christians here, Lord, that have believed some of these things and get down when things don't seem fair. Especially in the matter of why the bad things happen to good people. Outside of Jesus, you tell us there is none good. So Lord, just deal in our hearts. And we go away here today, and we thank you that we, we've caught something in our mind, in our heart that we have said we believe but it doesn't line up with the Word of God. And we thank you for what you're doing in our hearts, either here in this building today or this week as people all over watch the, the video. Speak to their hearts as well. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, if uh, you made a decision this morning, then see me or Kenny or uh, see some, just feel up to anybody who's like that know what's going on around here and just say, I need somebody to talk to me about that. If they don't feel they're comfortable doing that, they'll sure get you to one of us that will. If you gave your life to Jesus, we want to know about it. If you decided to, to join this church, we want to know about that. And if you if you commit, recommit your life to Christ, uh, we want to hear about that too. Because see, sometimes in that recommitment of our lives to Christ, it's like getting saved all over. It really is. So if you did that this morning, just see us before you leave. All right, let's all stand and do the chorus of healing. <laughs>